Hi, thank you for joining us for this CADI Time Tracker tutorial. I'm Derek Brotherton, and with me is Andrew Wheatley, who will be doing the presentation. The tutorial will last approximately 20 minutes, during which you'll see how you can utilize the Time Tracker functionality that we introduced in CADI 18 and enhanced in 19 to save all the hassle of completing timesheets. You can ask questions via the chat window or tweet them to at CADI Software. The tutorial will be giving you details of how you can watch again or share a copy of this presentation with your colleagues. But for now, I'm going to hand you straight over to Andrew, who's going to start the presentation. Thank you, Derek, and thank you for coming along, everyone. Caddy Time Tracker, something that's built into all caddies from Caddy 18 forwards. So if you're running Caddy 18 or Caddy 19, then it is there in your caddy system. So if you haven't enabled it already, then maybe this is uh, the sort of thing that will spur you on to doing it, because I'm sure there are lots of things in there that uh, you will be able to make very, very good use of. Before carrying out this presentation, we canvassed the opinion of people actually using the time tracker and said, uh, what, is it, what does it mean to you? And the overwhelming response was one of time saving and accuracy. Accuracy of reporting and the, the removal of the need to sit there and time log all of the time that you spend on drawing. So especially difficult when you've been maybe called away or come to the end of a weekend, uh, busy working, and the last thing on your mind when you were doing the working was noting down all the hours that you spent, but then on Monday morning the client wants to know, and if you don't let him know, he won't pay you. So a perfect, perfect opportunity just to switch it on with just a quick enable and get all of that data logged so when you do get asked the questions or you do need to fill in those timesheets, all the pain is gone. All you need to do is output it to something that we have here, say it's an Excel spreadsheet, so this is just a, a little illustration taking a simple project. So these were drawings that I did for something for a, a UK user group presentation and you can see that within the report we have not only the working sessions, so you can see exactly when it was, so if people, clients don't believe that you were burning the midnight oil for them, then you can very quickly show them. But it also shows the amount of time that the drawing was open, so open on your machine, uh, as well as the work time. So if you've opened the drawing and then got called away, it's not a problem. CADI differentiates between the time that you have the drawing open and the time that you've actually spent working on it. And we'll see a little later how you can set the interrogation uh, of your drawing session through the use of the, the configuration within the time tracker. If you've been working on a drawing and decide to that uh, what you've been working on is actually worth saving, it'll log how much time you've actually saved on that drawing, whereas sometimes you might just discard it, say you've been reviewing a drawing for instance. And you can see there at the end you have the purpose. So the purpose of the drawing, it could be editing, it could be developing the concept, it could be a three-dimensional uh, representation or rendering maybe. So you have the facility to enter into that the precise purpose for which the drawing was open on your, your caddy at any one time. Another function that I think a lot of people using caddy have come to love uh, or using the time tracker have come to love is the load from history function. So if we go into uh, our caddy here, I'm just going to call up the load from drawing history dialog and we'll see that we have a number of things. So if, if you're one of the, the people that is maybe not as rigorous as you might be in terms of noting where you save all your drawings, this is perfect. Obviously no excuse for not logging where you save them, but it can be very useful for getting you out of a scrape and finding that drawing that went missing just before the meeting you're about to attend. So having a look down the uh, drawing history dialogue here, we can see that we have the ability to view all drawings, so we see our, our sessions here. So if we wanted to know what we were doing on a particular day, so maybe on Thursday the 24th of April, I could go for the stats on that, and you see we get an instant log of all the time that was spent there. So whether I actually worked on that drawing that was open for 15 hours and 32 minutes, we can see that actually I didn't actually do any work on it. It was just there hanging around. I must have been diverted into doing something different. So you get that accurate listing without having to scratch the head 
and then go back to diaries and scribbled notes and uh, desk blotters and all the rest of it to try and work out where the time went. So if we go to that day again, this time drilling down onto a particular drawing, clicking on one of those there, we can get the stats on that drawing. So we can see exactly what we were doing with that drawing on a particular day. You also notice that we have at the bottom the ability to open the folder. It gives us a listing for the path. So again, if you've picked out a drawing, it will show you exactly where that drawing is saved. It gives you the ability to open that folder. So if you've opened a drawing and then saved and, and can't remember exactly where that is, that's very useful for that. If you've been doing a drawing that you know you're working on at the same time, you may have saved it inadvertently in that folder, for instance. That will give you a very good way of doing it. You also have the ability to either double-click on a drawing or use the open facility here, and that will directly open the drawing to you, into your caddy. We have the filter by. So if we look at the little illustration here, we'll see that we may have a number of clients, and different clients that we have may have different projects that we can allocate to them, and obviously there would be drawings within those projects. So we can filter by our client if we wish. So we can have our, our client one, two, or three, and we can select from the list the particular client that we're interested in. We can also filter by project. So we could actually drill down further through the tree and get to say project one or project two or three and select that project from the list. Or, and this one, very, very useful if your typing is as good as mine. So I knew that I'd done a drawing on the quick catch function, so something to display to the user group maybe, but I just can't find it. I could have tried using the Windows Explorer and typed in quick catch, got absolutely nowhere. Uh, and it takes sometimes quite a considerable time. Here, all we're doing is, is searching on the Caddy database, so the time tracker database. So it's much faster and much more direct. So if I were to type in hack and just search, instantly I've got a listing of all the times I've worked on drawings. So if I go for that Thursday, for instance, you can see that I've got uh, the quick hatch drawing that I was looking for, and we'll also notice that I've misspelt it. So if I had been having to search through on the, the queues, it may have taken me quite a while. So a very good way of tracking down those, uh, those slippery little drawings that sometimes don't appear exactly where you thought that you'd save them. But that's the load from drawing history. So if you haven't used that one uh, in the past, very, very useful. and a reason good enough to uh, enable Time Tracker in the first place. So how do we access the Time Tracker and how do we turn on the Time, time Tracker functionality? Well, down at the, the bottom of our Caddy menu, so the very bottom one, we'll see Time and the clock face here. And if we hit Configure, you'll see that we have at the very top of it under General Properties, the ability to just place a tick in there to enable time management. So what this will do is start recording all of the drawings, logging them in that load from history list, logging all the time that we, we spend working on them. So it will start from the moment we uh, enable it and then commence with a, a working version within Caddy. Frequency. So what this does, and if we remember back to our Excel spreadsheet here, we can see that we have the open time and the work time. So going back to uh, Caddy here, the check that I have set is a minute, which is probably a little uh, too slim for a lot of people, but say you build to a tenth of an hour, then you could set it to six minutes, for instance. So whenever a drawing is open on your screen, it will Caddy, you know, the time tracker functionality within it, will search to see what drawings are open and log any drawings that have changed uh, after that period of time. So very, very good, very accurate, or as accurate as you want it, and a good way of keeping things logged and all up to date. You have the database properties, so you can find out more about that if you want to give us a ring, but uh, suffice to say that you can use the compact edition, which is contained within Caddy, or for people who are involved in uh, larger practices on networks with IT managers and so on, you might want to have 
uh, full SQL Server installation where all the data is pumped back across the network to there. In terms of the database, it's also possible to back up the database. So just as uh, with your drawings, this is important information that you can back up and record and save so that you can get back to it at any time uh, should the, uh, uh, the worst case scenario happen, um, a hard disk go or a machine gets stolen, for instance. You have administrative passwords there. So again, for IT managers, uh, people doing the administration, you've got the ability to, to log that information or get that access to that logged information and, uh, and keep it secure. You can use different users on the uh, same machine. So if you have uh, hot desking, for instance, you can, you can get different people to log in uh, or log their time uh, on the particular drawings or to the particular drawings. You can also choose the uh, session purposes. So you have the ability to add as with the users and the uh, session purposes. So whether it's something as simple as editing, maybe reviewing a drawing, printing maybe, that sort of thing. Uh, but you could also do as certainly some of our users using the, the time tracker in earnest do, is utilize the RRBA fee stages. So just copying those straight into the, uh, the session purposes, we now have access to precise recording for the, uh, the fee stage they're actually working on at the time on a project. Activate. is there for those people who want to, to take advantage of the, the full uh, opportunities of the, the time tracker. And I'll maybe cover that a little bit more at the, uh, the end. And then the enable dialogues, this just resets the dialogues because you can uh, effectively tune them out, just say, well, these are the settings I would like to, uh, to have running, and it keeps it very simple, very transparent, and uh, very non-invasive, so you can just get on and draw as normal. So how do we set up our Caddy Time Tracker to get the, uh, the different clients that we have? Well, if we go to the clients, button, you see that we have the ability to add clients in here, so we get a little dialogue that we can type into and just OK that. Same thing with the, uh, the project, so we can add a project here, we can cancel that too, and uh, we can also allocate uh, particular projects to particular clients. So in this case, we have the, uh, the domestic house there, which we would allocate to client one and maybe a factory to, to our client two there. So you can allocate those projects. And then, of course, uh, as we're drawing, then we are also going to allocate those drawings to the particular projects that we're working on. So here we can use the Windows Explorer functionality to select a whole number of drawings and allocate those. We can use the Shift key to select a block. Uh, we can use the Control key to select and deselect, just as, as we would if we were using Windows Explorer there. And we can allocate those just by picking on a particular uh, project and then hitting the Allocate uh, button. We can also unallocate un un drawings in the same way. Show me, and you'll see this on a number of the dialogues that we, uh, we're using today. The Show Me takes you straight to a YouTube video showing you exactly how to do these things. Well worth it uh, as a, a second reference. Did a drawing and maybe you thought you'd just have a look at it, maybe you just wanted to print it, and then you thought, ah, spotted a mistake, you might need to change the purpose of that session to editing. No need to just uh, delete the drawing and then open it up again, no need to close it. You can simply go to change purpose, and that will give you access to the, the purposes drop down where you can change the purposes for that uh, particular session on that particular drawing. With reference to the drawings that we do, sometimes it's very nice to be able to get an instant listing of the time and the sessions that you put into the drawing. So if the phone goes, somebody can say, well, how much time have you spent on this? Well, the quick stats does exactly that. It gives you the number of sessions, open time, work time, and so on. Uh, do be aware that that might not necessarily include the current session there. This brings us on to the reporting. So when we hit the reporting, uh, we have the opportunity to uh, allocate drawings. Uh, I'm just going to say no here, and we'll see that one of those little messages that we've talked about resetting. So I'll say no here. And we can 
in the case of the standard version output all the um, data for uh, today uh, straight to the screen uh, if we have the professional version then we have these other options available to us so we can search between dates we can search uh, this week this month or for the entire project so if you've got long projects which have gone for a, a number of months years even then it's possible to do that for the whole of the time since you enabled that that time tracker functionality so well worth enabling in terms of the projects then again we can pick the projects we want to do we could do all projects or we could pick an individual one we can pick a user that we want to output our uh, report for and the the purposes as well and if we do it to the screen that's time management report and we see again as we saw with the uh, the similar report which was to the excel file all those listings within a table there so even if you don't have the, the pro version you can still make use of that and fabulous for producing your timesheets if you do have the, the pro version again you might wish to output in a different way, maybe to an XLS, uh, an XLS file, and here you can send it to uh, wherever you like, and that would give you the opportunity to, to take the information straight into your Excel spreadsheet, and then perform whatever other functionality, allocating costs for a particular time, and so on. So, uh, very comprehensive way of, of outputting the, the data from the uh, Caddy Pro version. For anyone who shares their time between different machines, then Caddy also has the answer with its time tracker because there are utilities there allowing you to import and export your database files so that you can combine them automatically. So rather than having to uh, do it manually, you can get Caddy to do this for you. And it just makes it very, very easy uh, if you have a, work, uh, a machine at work, a machine at home, maybe you have a laptop so you can you can combine all of the data there and just keep a, a full and accurate record so how do we do this well this is under the utilities and if we go to the time logging we can see that we have the various uh, different tools in there don't want to initialize the time logging database again because that would clear what we have so we'll leave that one well alone and we'll go to the export the ability to re uh, export the records for clients projects drawing allocations uh, even session purposes and the ability under options there to erase the session records that could be very useful if you are wanting to archive your data for instance so maybe you've been working on this for a number of years your database file is getting very big and uh, you just want to archive that keep it nice and safe but uh, clear out everything to, to keep it much more concise and uh, immediate and the, the browse function would work in the, uh, the time honored fashion there. You just hit the X wall whenever necessary. Import, no surprises, it just takes you to the uh, uh, browser there so you can go and import those uh, files as well. So that really is a, a sort of general overview there of all the, the functionality within the Caddy Time Tracker. And Hopefully, in watching, you'll have seen something there that uh, will make you go and switch it on if you haven't already. And for those who've been using it a little, then maybe getting a, a, a lot more out of it will be what you'll be doing next. So uh, over to Derek. Have there been any questions uh, during the session that we can maybe help people a little further with? Thanks, Andrew. We've got three questions. The first one was from Carl, which uh, is a bit of a technical one, so I'll uh, probably answer that one myself. It's going to be okay. easier. Um, and uh, Carl is uh, obviously working in a larger environment where they have uh, servers in place already with uh, Microsoft SQL Server running for other applications. And he's saying, does this require its own server, or can he just uh, set up a new instance of SQL on that server and uh, use it there? And the answer is yes. Just uh, basically create a new instance of SQL on your existing servers and utilize your existing technology. You don't need to uh, spend money buying additional servers just for the Caddy Time Tracker. And a couple that uh, you're probably best answering, Andrew. Okay. Uh, first one from Sarah, saying that uh, she's been using the, uh, the standard version for a little while, and then uh, she's interested now in actually getting more data than just the daily data. But if she updates to the professional, is she going to get 
more data than just today. Is, is the professional data going to show from today, or will she be able to access that data from yesterday and the days gone by? Oh, absolutely she'll be able to access that data. All of the data is recorded in the database from the moment you in, enable it. So in terms of accessing that information, uh, it's only the limitation of the, the standard version that uh, uh, truncates it at the, the day for the, uh, the reporting and the three days for the history loading. As soon as you enable or activate uh, with the uh, professional version of it, the pro version, then you have access to your whole database. So you can go back through the, the entire project. So if we go back to the reporting here, then the, uh, all of these listings would then be live for you to, uh, uh, to be able to, to prepare your reports. And in the same way, using the load from, uh, from history, you'd be able to go back right through to whenever you uh, first enabled your uh, time logging information. And uh, finally from Maria, who uh, says, well, she doesn't save her drawings locally because of the way she works. Um, she just needs to save her drawings on her network server. And uh, will it still work the same way as that? Or is it only for people that are saving drawings locally on their own machine? No, it's, uh, it's for everybody. Uh, so even if you're using uh, a network server storing all your draw drawings there, uh, there are no limitations on how you can use the uh, uh, drawing history and uh, reporting functions. They're all, they all work perfectly well with a, uh, a common server installation there. So um, the answer is a big resounding yes, just go ahead and do it and enjoy. Excellent. I think that wraps up the questions, Andrew. Uh, thank you to you and thank you to everybody who's taken the time out to watch the tutorial. We hope that it's been of interest to you and uh, we hope that many of you will just go and click that button that says enable and start utilizing it since you've already got it. If you want to uh, share this uh, with some colleagues or uh, watch it again to see what it can do, we'll be sending you an email link very quickly or very soon so you can uh, uh, see where you can watch it on YouTube. And uh, we'll also send you a link to the, the full Caddy Software channel on YouTube where there's some several hundred drawings, several hundred videos where you can uh, see the other functionality of the Kelly system that you use and uh, hopefully make better use of it. Don't forget there's a lot more information, the frequently asked questions and product information on our website, kellysoftware.com. And if you're not currently you know, valid for 19 or you haven't actually installed your 19 and you need a bit of help with it, don't hesitate to give us a call. Contact Andrew directly through his email, andrew at kelly.co.uk. Visit our website, fill in an inquiry form there. Well, give us a call in the UK. Our number is 01234-834-920. Our uh, foreign numbers are available on the website. So thank you again for your time. I hope you have a rest, enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you, Andrew, for a superb presentation. Thank you, Eric.